Hey guys, welcome to Concordia On Air. Here's what's coming up on tonight's show. In news, students are brewing. Is there going to be snow yet in weather? In sports, the girls' soccer team is heading to New York. Black Friday wish list on A&E. All that and more. Stay tuned. Welcome to Concordia On Air's version of Minute to Win It. I'm your host, Grace Lenhardt, and today we have our wonderful contestant, Dylan. Dylan, so where are you from? I am from Manchester, United Kingdom. And are you so excited to compete on Minute to Win It today? I am so excited. I've been wanting to be on TV forever since I was little. <sighs> Great. Well, we're ready to go. So, okay. Dylan, today your challenge will be to unpuzzle this cheese it box. In the correct order, over here, in one minute. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to look at it and prepare. And is it just this part? Just this part. Okay. Whew. And Dylan, are you ready? Yes. You have a minute to win it. Go. It looks like Dylan is already getting the words figured out. This can be very intense. Oh. <laughs> is it getting harder? I just am getting stuck. Okay, Dylan, you have 30 seconds left. Oh, whatever. <laughs> okay, um, um, yes, maybe. Okay. <laughs> and 15. <laughs> I can't. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, you're so close. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Dylan, it's okay. You did not make a minute to win it. Don't. But we have another easier version right down here. <laughs> Would you like to try it out? Yes. Okay. Let's put this back up. Okay, Dylan, you have a minute to win it. Go. Uh... Well, Dylan's figuring that out. If you guys want to do this at home at all, all you need is a cereal box or something, a pair of scissors, and some tape, and a bulletin board to put it on. And you can play this with your friends every day. So, Dylan, how's it going? Good. I think you might win this one. There we go! She did it Ta -da. in less than a minute. A minute to win it. Great, Dylan. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. It's been a and dream of mine. And good luck all you guys. Have a great day. Welcome to News. I'm Sam Honstadt. And I'm Maddie Campbell. This year's Brew Week is well underway for Cobbers. The week, which focuses on students becoming responsibly engaged in the world, features a series of activities that Cobbers can participate in to become more involved in this community. Events for the week include a forum on civic engagement, a concert with the FM Coalition for Homeless Persons, a community education course on winterizing your home, and a mural to help students reflect on the week's meaning. Tonight, we'll feature the Clothesline Project, which raises awareness of domestic violence and sexual assault. Concordia is hosting the 5th Annual Chinatown Hall this evening until approximately 8 p.m. Chinatown Hall is a national day of programming on China that involves 50 cities in the United States. The event will feature a webcast interview about relationships between China and the U.S., as well as a discussion about energy for the future and energy and the environment. The event is currently taking place in Birkeland Alumni Lounge in Memorial. Last weekend, 10 vehicles were vandalized on a street in Moorhead, just north of MSUM. 18-year-old Kyle Johnson is now facing felony charges of criminal damage to property. One car owner says that he heard a noise and found his rearview mirror smashed when he went outside. 
He called police and officers eventually found Johnson. Police say he was swinging a metal tube at driver's side mirrors while riding as a passenger in a car with a group of teenagers. Two of these teens were let go with no charges, and the underage driver may be charged as an accomplice. If you notice any damage to your car that you suspect may be related, Moorhead Police encourage you to call and report it. Last Friday allowed the citizens of America to honor all the veterans that have served for this country. Concordia is home of a few good women who have served this country through their gift of service and work for world peace. C News brought these three individuals to our attention and thanked them for all their work. Jessica Summer, Kelsey Johnson, and Marsha Warner all know what true dedication and sacrifice for others entail. Although these brave young women hail from three different states, they all process a true patriotism both in heart and dedication. We are proud to have them as part of our Cobber family and thank them for everything they have done for us and our country. For all you out there who love to sing, be sure to come over to Concordia College's Comstock Theater tonight for a special sing-along performance of Grease. The rock and roll musical has been a hit so far, and now you can join the cast in singing all those familiar songs. Instead of normal ticket sales, Concordia is putting brew into action and asking that you bring a non-perishable food item to be donated to the Dorothy Day Food Pantry. Seating for tonight's sing-along will be general admission. The show will be at 7.30 p.m. this evening only, so bring your friends and be ready to sing. Jenny Farley, also known as Wow from MTV's sh reality show Jersey Shore, was here in Fargo on Saturday. Some of you may have spotted her at the Hub downtown. Although she had a great time at the club, Wow did not have the same to say it for Fargo's airport security. She stated on Twitter that she was signaled out while boarding her flight and was treated like a criminal. According to the Fargo Forum, the Stars travels weekly and says she has never experienced anything like this before. The Transportation Security Administration spokeswoman's statement denied the claim, stating that the TSA strives to screen all passengers with dignity and respect while performing its security mission. Hey, Emily, will there be any snow? It looks like there might be a little chance of snow on Saturday, but um, as of right now, it's kind of all staying a um, little bit north. I mean, we're getting a little right in the corner, but I don't know not looking outside, it's not looking so good. Um, looks like uh, East Coast is kind of getting a lot more uh, weather action going on. A um, lot more snow and weather, I guess you can say, than we are right now. If you look at this, um, everywhere kind of is pretty evenly, kind of cold. Texas and Florida are getting a little bit more of the heat, but you know what? It's getting close to December. I think we need to start having a little bit colder weather now. Um, and then for tonight, it looks like um, it's going to get kind of cold, like 10 degrees. Um, so um, bundle up, make sure your windows are closed in your dorm rooms. Um, and I guess that is it for what the weather is going to be like tonight. Um, and if you are looking for something to keep you warm as the weather gets cooler, you might want to pick up a hot cup of coffee and um, in the maze and then uh, find out what to do with the brew or what brew is doing this week. So um, here we go. There has never been a better time to become responsibly engaged in the world. That's because it's brew week here at Concordia. The week kicked off on Monday evening with the Civic Engagement Forum. Well, this is the Civic Engagement Forum engagement forum is all about uh, the importance of effective dialogue, one-to-one -one conversation and group conversation to make positive action in the world and brew, essentially. Jessica Roscoe was one of the participants in the one-on-one -on -one discussion. Well, we had a really great time uh, communicating and networking with somebody that we didn't know. I talked to Evan, and it turns out that we're both from small town North Dakota, which is really cool. Uh, and we actually have a lot of the same interests, which is even cooler. Tuesday was Habitat for Humanity Day, in which buttons were sold, and also painted bowls were on sale after the Echo Band concert to raise money for the homeless. Uh, we are selling buttons for Habitat for Humanity, and it's for... Um, if you buy a button for a dollar uh, just to raise money for Habitat, then you can put your name in a drawing 
and the two things that we have drawing for are early trip signups for trip participants or if you're not going on a trip you can also win a gift card to Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, yeah, and it's actually also Habitat for Humanity Week too, so we kind of have two simultaneous things going on. If you have yet to participate in Brew Week, you can still attend the Sexual Assault Awareness Session this evening, or check out the Education and Impact Sessions on Thursday evening, or even the Brew Reflection on Friday morning. For Concordia On Air, this is Hannah Johnson and Paul Flesland. Thank you. It's always great to know how to brew here on Concordia's campus. Today with us we have the wonderful Sarah from Lambda Delta Sigma talking yeah. a little bit to us about Operation Christmas Child. So Sarah, what exactly is Operation Christmas Child? Well, it's a program where you can send boxed, um, like shoe boxes with gifts and treats and supplies to, um, to kids all over the world. So it's a really great way to give them Christmas presents. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And how did um, Lambda Delta Sigma get involved with this project? Um, well, this year, um, the philanthropy chairs, me and my co-chair, have really been trying to get um, Concordia and Lambda Delta Sigma more involved with actually helping other people instead of just like raising money for programs. And um, with Brew, we wanted to get involved in the world. And um, this is a way to help people all over the world and um, just make kids' days brighter all over the world for Christmas. That's great. Mm -hmm. So how can we help? Can we like donate money or bring in items or how does that work? Yep, you can donate money or items. Um, we had a table in Knutson Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but if you still want to donate, you can email Brittany Davila at bdavila at cord.edu. Okay, that sounds good. And how did you originally get involved? Um, I've done it since I was in elementary school through my church, um, and my mom always did it. So that's how I got involved, but we got involved um, just by contacting the organization and asking them how we could, you know, how we could help out. That's awesome. Yeah. And have you, you seen any success stories personally, or do you just feel good about sending things all around the world? Well, we, I've never, like, been able to know where my gift has gone, but um, there's a lot of, like, videos about it and how excited the kids get to, like, receive a Christmas present um, because they usually don't get any. Yeah, that's great. So if you want to know any more information or do you want to help donate, you just go to that email, and that's awesome to know. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Now, let's learn how and who to cheer for with Yao and Katie in sports. Thank you, Sarah, for coming in to talk about Operation Christmas. Thank you, Hello, and welcome to sports. I'm Katie Stout. And I'm Yao Voto. So, Yao, I have to ask, did you catch the Vikings and Packers game? Yes, I diddly did. <laughs> who did you watch it with? Oh, I watched it with a few buddies of mine. We were in my dorm. Because after tutoring, we, we caught, uh, just catch a little glimpse of the game. And I mean, these Packers, I mean, Packers just, they just destroyed these poor Vikes. They did. You're a Packers fan? Oh, yeah. I, I grew up in a household, a Packer household. Every Sunday, my dad would yell at the TV. Like, <laughs> it, it was, I miss that about home. I mean, every time I come home and the Packers are on, I would tell him, I wonder, I watch my dad and see if he, be yelling at the TV. So you must have been pretty excited about them winning the Super Bowl last oh, year? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's like better than Christmas. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, I'm a Vikings fan, and I feel like Minnesota sports has kind of like what the Twins did last time. They were kind of like out of the whole division for a while, then at the last like possible second, they started winning games. Like All of a sudden, I feel like the Vikings are going to do that. Probably again. Well, I mean, <laughs> their winning streak is like the stock market, which has not been doing so hot. <laughs> okay. It's going well, <laughs> down, down, and down. I mean, they can go into bankruptcy pretty soon. I mean, but anyway. In other news, <laughs> do you feel like you were the last to know about Cobber Sports updates? Here's something that can help you out. Concordia offers play-by-play -play sports updates and scores through their Twitter page. All you have to do is create a Twitter account and follow Cobber Sid, S-I-D. If that doesn't do it for you, Concordia also streams some games live from the athletic website. The direct link to the broadcast and schedule is www.cord.edu slash athletics slash live dot php. Over the weekend, our Cobber volleyball team battled it out in the NCAA, NCAA tournament. Our first opponent Friday was UW Stevens Point, and it would be a tough match. The Pointers would obtain the first point, but our Cobber women would come back and tie the game. Soon after, both teams would play their hearts out, only to tie again. 
The final game, the crowd was restless and the cheering their hearts are. And in the end, our Cobber women managed to pull out a miracle win of 16 to 14. Saturday night, the Cobbers would crush Beth Bethel with a 3-0 victory. The final day of the tournament would be an emotional game against the Tommies. Our ladies would try their hearts out to win, but in the end, were crushed 0-3. Good run, ladies. We're all proud of you, of how far you've made it this year, and ho we hope you go farther next year. The Cobber women's soccer team made it to the Sweet 16 yet again. The girls have been traveling coast to coast to make their mark on the NCAA. On Monday, the women will be jet-setting off to New York for the Sweet 16 tournament. The Cobbers made it to the Sweet 16 by prevailing against Puget Sound through great penalty kicks. They also took on Santa Cruz in which they won 2-1 in overtime. Cheer on the Cobber women as they represent Concordia in the Sweet 16 on Saturday, November 19th. This game will be streaming live and you won't want to miss it. Although the Cobber boys basketball team had pl has played an, exhibi an exhibition game, which has resulted in the loss. This upcoming Thursday, the men's basketball season begins at Concordia! Kicking off the season, our Cobber men face off the, against U of M Morris at 7 p.m. at Memorial Auditorium. The game is free with your student ID, so come with your friends and watch our men battle it out and cheer our team home to their first game victory. Lately, Joe Paterno has been a buzz about topic. With all the breaking news on the story, it is hard to keep the facts straight. If you have not heard, the Big Ten has made the decision to take Joe Paterno's name off the Big Ten trophy due to previous events. In a Bryant Bennett article posted on ESPN.com, Bennett stated, Paterno has not been charged with any crimes up to this point. It is understandable that the conference wants to steer clear from this mess, which is why Big Ten officials must be praying that Wisconsin beats the Nittany Lions the in the finale to keep them out of the title game. For more information involving this story and Joe Paterno, visit ESPN.com. The, uh, the latest in NBA lockout proves that it is most likely a 2011 through 2012 season is not going to happen. On Monday, the Players Association rejected the league's proposal for a new labor deal and began disbanding. The players are fully aware of this battle that might cost them their season. For more information on this story, you can vi visit ESPN.com. Now let's see what's Han what Hannah's cooking up in that kitchen. And I'm here to show you how to make the simplest dessert you've ever made in your entire life. All you're going to need is three ingredients. So first off, we're going to need Oreo pie crust, vanilla ice cream, half a gallon, and 20 ounces of caramel sauce. So the first step is super easy. All you're gonna do is take the caramel. The squeeze bottle makes it really easy, but we're gonna put about half of the caramel sauce right into the Oreo cookie crust. And you can just kind of swirl it around, try to make an even layer on the bottom of the pie crust. And we're actually gonna use about half of this caramel on the bottom. Okay, so the next step, we're going to take half a gallon of this vanilla ice cream and we are just going to plop it into this bowl. It's actually easier if your ice cream is at room temperature because we want the ice cream to be very, very, very soft. And I'm just going to take this and just slide right into the bowl. Easy as that. Okay, so now we're just going to start kneading it a little bit because what we're going to do next is put the caramel sauce into the ice cream. Parts of it are really soft, parts of it are still a little hard, but we, it's okay that the ice cream is melting a little bit because what we're gonna do is stick this pie into the freezer. Okay, so now I've kneaded the ice cream. It's still a little bit hard, but that's perfect consistency. You don't want it to be completely melting while you're putting the caramel in. So now, I'm gonna take the rest of the caramel and just squirt it into the ice cream. All right, I'm gonna pause for a second and then stir that in. Because what we want to do is after I put this ice cream into the pie crust, I'm going to drizzle some caramel on top as well. So we just want there to be caramel everywhere pretty much. So this right now is like the perfect consistency that you want. You don't want it to be too runny, but you're not going to want it too hard either. Okay, so I poured enough caramel into the ice cream, so I think we're ready to put it into the pie crust. So I'm just going to take this wooden spoon and just kind of gently plop it on top of the caramel. We don't want the caramel to spread out. 
but we're just going to plop it right in there. And this isn't supposed to be an even pie. It's supposed to have ridges and bumps in it. We're not going to smooth this out at the end. We're actually going to leave it in chunks. Just going to make sure it's all on the edges too. So we don't want to see at the bottom of the pie. Perfect. So now that I have all my ice cream and caramel in the pie, we're going to add a little more caramel. Mostly because I love caramel, but actually it just adds a lot of um, really great decoration to it. So we're just going to kind of drizzle it over the top. Just looks great when you actually take it out of the freezer. Okay, now we're finished making our delicious and simple pie. Now I'm going to stick in the freezer. Now all you have to do is take it out in a two to three hours and it'll be ready to eat. Well, that was really easy to make. I can't believe we only used three ingredients. Join me next time for some more simple and delicious recipes. Thanks, Hannah, for that tasty treat. Maybe over break, I'll try to whip one of those pies up. Welcome to a &E. I'm Logan Rydell. And I'm Mariah Moen. So tell me, Mariah, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Um, it's hard to choose. Uh, probably uh, like apple pie Ooh, or I like apple pumpkin pie. pie. Personally, I prefer pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yeah. And ham. I like ham more <laughs> than turkey. I, yeah. I, I don't understand why. So does your whole family get together for Thanksgiving? Or? Um, uh, funny thing. We actually go to at least six different households just for Thanksgiving because I've got uh, wow. like three sets of grandparents. Cool. That's yeah. actually fun. You have a lot of family then. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and what's your favorite food besides pie or, well, pie and ham? <laughs> mm, I'd have to say stuffing. Stuffing, absolutely amazing, <laughs> especially when made by my Aunt Marie. Oh. oh just nice. delicious. What about you? Um... Probably stuffing too, yeah. Stuffing, I actually, yeah. I our whole family gets together and we go to my grandparents' house and my grandma makes really good, so just food all together, cool. turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes. Cool. You like gravy? Yes. I Especially like gravy. on stuffing. <laughs> like gravy soaked stuffing is just absolutely amazing. It really is. Oh. Okay. Well, let's see what's going down this weekend for all you cobbers. For all you who missed it, there was an intense contest of strength and endurance with, with the kickboxing event sponsored by CEC in North Gym. The group fitness event is just another in the series that CEC is currently sponsoring in, in order to bring some fun fitness activities to campus. Concordia student Katie Stout said that kickboxing provided a nice change from the usual Zumba, and the event was overall a blast. So keep an eye out, Cobbers, for more upcoming fitness events in the upcoming months. Hey Cobbers, looking for a way to relax before break? There will be a CEC held movie night on this Friday, November 16th in Campus Centrum. Starting at 9, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 will be playing. So grab your friends and favorite candy, wands, and don't miss out on watching the end of Harry Potter here at Concordia. Well, the CEC is at it again. Another round of trivia night is on this Thursday, November 17th at 10 p.m. until midnight in the maze. With another amazing array of categories, all are welcome to participate in another stimulating brain exercise. Looking for a sophisticated way to spend your evening? Well, coming up on Sunday from 2 to 4.30 p.m., there will be a PRISM concert. The Symphonia Band is also presenting their fall concert on Tuesday night from 7 to 9 p.m. So venture out to support your fellow talented peers and come watch these two exceptional performances. L.A.-based electronic music innovator Crady is coming to the hub Saturday the 19th. Joining in on the show is also Sovereign Sec, who are sure to make the night a party. Tickets are on sale currently with prices ranging from $10 in advance to $12 the day of the show. The doors open at 8, the show starts at 9, and with hits from his new album, Labyrinth, this is a show that will definitely get you dancing. Since the holidays are getting nearer, it is time to start thinking about those Black Friday lists. In honor of this, let's take a look at the top five Black Friday wish list items. Plasma TV comes in at number five with a variety of options and low prices. It's a great time to buy it if you are willing to wait outside. Need a new Xbox? Well, Black Friday is the perfect time to purchase one with bundles dropping $50 in price. Laptops are always a given as models are put on ridiculous specials 
the day after Christmas. Games are second on the list as their low price listing offers a ton of options for yourself or for gifts. iPhone number four comes in at number one. This, is in demand, this in demand item is always wanted, but with special offers for shoppers on Black Friday, you can expect it will be on most people's lists. Good to know about those Thanksgiving things. Yes. In the, well, I'll just do it. Yes. Okay. She thinks that she can beat my time. I don't know. See if she can do it in less than a minute. Okay. I'm skeptical of this, but she believes she can do it, so we're going to give it a try. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. You can start. Okay. So it's kind of crazy. I do know how to spell, so that's a, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying I didn't? No, no, I'm not saying that. You knew what the Jesus box looked like I before. Did. Yeah. I didn't. I don't know where this goes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's see. 40 seconds left. Oh, thanks. There, I got cheese it spelled. That's good. Twenty seconds. I'm a little scared here. Ten seconds. <laughs> Five seconds. Zero. It looks like your time is <laughs> up, Grace. I think you made that minute go by fast. But I suppose it is kind of hard. Now we know why people don't win. On minute, minute to win, win it. it. Darn it. Well, are you going anywhere Thanksgiving, Dylan? I believe I'm going just to my house. Usually we go to my aunt and uncle's, but this year we are just going to chill at my house. Hopefully it doesn't snow too much. Yeah. It was so cold that day. I think I was blown over at least five times. Totally understandable. Have you got blown over yet? Not yet, but I've heard a couple stories of it so far. Yeah. So, so watch out for the wind because it will come get you. It's out to get you. It is. It is out to get you. So, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm heading over to Denver. Denver. To see my relatives and run in the turkey trot. The what? The turkey, turkey trot. trot. Have you guys not heard of the turkey trot? Okay, no. you should totally check it out because I think it's for United Way. It's a great United cause. Way. Okay. And um, they have them all over, and you can like dress up as a turkey and trot around. So. Is it a race? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like last time, I got like a thousandth place, but it was out of ten thousand, <laughs> so it's okay. I'm just really bad. So bad. Turkey trot. I've never actually heard of that before. Yeah, it's cool. So, it's really yeah. nice. Yeah. Definitely a cool activity. Do you have a favorite food that you're looking forward to? Um, I'd have to say either pumpkin pie. Love pumpkin yes. pie. And then stuffing, maybe. Okay. Those are good. And yeah. turkey, if you have the right gravy. And okay. salt. I'm not a big Thanksgiving food person. Usually, more the atmosphere? More the atmosphere. The okay. family's good. The football's good, usually. And... Uh, <laughs> Usually. The Macy's Day Parade. Do you ever watch that? No. It's like a family tradition. If you don't watch it, you should check it out. It's like really cool. They have these big balloons and Ooh. things that, yeah. It's are really they in turkey shape? Turkeys. There, there are some turkey shapes. So, Concordia, go check out those crazy balloons. And also, don't forget to check out our website at www.concordiaonair.com. Yeah. Have a great Thanksgiving. See you later.